Bujo Tansegia. Hey, how are you? It's a smudge for your thoughts. With Kihiasis. <laughs> and Zosha. So today we have a treat for you. Um, we speak with um, Janita and Clayson Benali. They make up the band Seahasen. Uh, we, it's a great, great episode. I don't want to talk too much because it's a long one. There's a lot of great talk uh, discussion in there. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, we have a, a little treat for you. For our intro, we're playing one of their songs. So I hope you like it. <laughs> All right. See ya. So welcome to us, much for your thoughts, welcome. and thank you for being with us here today. Um, so with our first question, we just ask, what is your name, uh, where are you from, and how do you identify yourself, your tribe, nation, band, citizen of, or anything that you identify yourself with? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yate, Shae, Janita, Benali, Yanishia. Hello, my name is Janita Benali. Shae. 
I am born to the Red Coat people. I am born for the Bitterwater people who are the, originally come from the Eagle clan. Um, the, the wandering people are my paternal grandparents, Otto Polish Hoyegi Dashice. And the ones that they call the Polish people are my maternal grandparents, Zitlajin de Nasha, Otto Kinsana e Shehuan. I'm originally from Black Mesa in Arizona, but I reside also in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I am Dine. Akwit ego she e Mishle. In this way, I am a Dine, a Navajo woman. Thank you. And I am so happy to be here on Smudge for Your Thoughts with you all. My sister, Janita Benali, um, introduced us in our clans, our clan system as Dine. More people know us as, as Navajo, but Dine just means the people. And for us, we have the clan system that represents our mother, our father, you know, and then our grandparents and establishes our connection to the earth in this place. And we obviously share the same clans, but our terms of relationship can vary, you know, even like with my my sister, she's got some kids. I would consider her my my nieces as my little mom. So, you know, uh, I'm I'm a father as well. I've got two beautiful daughters. Uh one's 12 and the other one is five. She just turned five the other day. And I live here in Flagstaff. And we are Sihasen. We have a, a rock group called Sihasen, which means hope in the Navajo language. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for um, being on here and for introducing yourselves. Um, we were super excited to have you on because we love the band. Um, so uh, moving on to our next question, which we'll, I guess, discuss more in depth about the band and other things, I'm sure. Um, what do you guys do for a living slash passion, hobbies? You know, what is what is your purpose in life? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what is purpose in life is a very big Yeah, question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not really. <laughs> but what I'm do you guys do? I'm trying to figure that out. Sometimes I know, day same. day. <laughs> <laughs> But I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, that's actually what motivates me getting out of bed is what is my purpose? Today? Yeah. Like, what am I going to do today? Yeah. How, you know, how can I be of service today? How can, yeah. you know, how can I inspire or empower, create positive change? Mm -hmm. And so that's actually what gets me out of bed every morning is, awesome. is what is my purpose today? <laughs> love it. So Same. I'm a musician and I am a singer songwriter along with my brother. And, um, you know, we, that's what we grew up doing. Um, so, so that's a huge part of our identity. I think is being able to utilize a uh, song to tell story. And so, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I've, that's, I get labeled an activist a lot and I'm always like, hmm, I don't know if I'm an activist, I'm an actionist. Like, you know, I'm an empowerist, I'm hopefully an inspirer. Um, and so, you know, I really, for me, one of my big passions is, is working to create positive change, to create healthy communities that are built upon respect and that are culturally based. And what else do I do? Um, I don't know. <laughs> we we have like a lot overall, of different hats. Vision. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> we wear a lot um, of different hats. I know Janita is yeah. consulting as well on a comic book series. Ooh. We do traditional dance. A lot of uh, the the work that we do is based in culture and how to preserve and ensure that it's there for future generations. So we grew up doing traditional Native American dance. First kind of powwow and also our traditional Navajo or Diné dances, the social dances that are allowed to be shared in public with our father, Joan Spinali, who is a cultural, um, I guess, I guess a living treasure, Arizona yeah. living treasure recognized by the, the government, you know, for oh, really? the knowledge and information that he has as well. But he's a hoop dancer, medicine practitioner. And from him, you know, I, I learned 
so many different skills and arts from, you know, silversmithing to working with horses, livestock. We, by default, I think as the net, we grew up being ranchers, having sheep, having cows, different animals that that's supposed to be kind of how we connect with the earth and move forward. But today there's so many challenges that we face that um, they've re-implemented a livestock reduction program on a reservation in our community where we are not allowed to have more than two cows for our entire family. And that whole lifestyle is changing so rapidly. You know, just within my lifetime, I'm watching, you know, that that system that used to be of self-sufficiency for our indigenous families and communities, you know, in the Black Mesa Big Mountain region throughout the Navajo Reservation as well, you know, where they keep reducing and reducing and taking away that self-sufficiency, that connection to the land. So that's something that is part of our identity in our life way, but unfortunately it's it's harder and harder to survive, you know, in, in this yeah. the system. I, should say but yeah. training horses that's something that that I do you know we've done dabbled in so many different areas from acting modeling but you know at the heart of it it all comes back to trying to do outreach and you know connect with our youth connect with our community try to share our our culture and teach people that hey we're still here and our culture has value today and it's necessary its voice is powerful and it should be uplifted. I think it is, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say that's that's a huge part of, I think our foundation, our, our upbringing that our parents really kind of instilled in us was the importance of our culture and that that our culture is, is not just um, something, it's not just an art form, it's not just for show, but rather it's our life mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's, you know, I think that, you know, as, as parents now, that's probably what we're instilling in our children too. So both, both you guys, uh, uh, we're talking about, uh, staying connected to your culture and doing, uh, outreach and different things. Um, could you expand about or expand on that a little bit? Like what kind of outreach events do you do and, uh, how do you uh, incorporate culture into those outreach events? Well, everything's changed now. Um, so we are trying to find new ways and utilize technology to continue to teach, to mentor, to inspire our youth to carry on our culture. Um, a lot of the work, a lot of the work that Clayson and I um, love to do intertwined with our music and with our, our dances and, 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 and everything that all the different hats that we wear is uh, youth empowerment workshops that where we go into different communities and and work with youth and help kids to understand that anger is an incredible tool, but it's not the end all. That utilizing what resources we have uh, to find a creative outlet is really important. And so Clayson and I, we, um, you know, just just as as caring folk um, and and artists who tend to have a kind of different lens on life, um, we utilize our skill sets to help encourage youth. I mean, we grew you know we grew up um, having to be very resourceful. Um, so so we kind of so so when we when we bring that to the table with youth, I think that they really have an understanding. I think we've gone through different phases and different stages as well. You know, with with our previous group, it was very hardcore punk rock in your face. And a lot of the actions that we did were, were more confrontational by nature, you know, going into the front lines, you know, whether it was like going to the WTO meetings in Prague and performing and getting to to the places where we felt that that message was needed to have that indigenous voice inserted into the discussion where, you know, you know, obviously we've been marginalized. So with, you know, becoming parents and, and having this, you know, it's kind of a transition for us when we formed Seahouse and it was, okay, how do we transform the anger 
or the the frustration and make it into something more hopeful. When we first kind of went through that transition of of moving from black fire and trying to find who who we are, our voice, our identity. I used to just be a drummer in the back, you know, sitting up on a riser, you know, just observing, not really singing, not not using my voice and trying to find my own personal identity. You know, when we when I moved, you know, when I perform now, we're two piece and I stand, you know, up front on the side of the stage, you know, it's balanced, it's equal. And we wanted to to kind of, you know, Blackfire was very male orientated, very aggressive. We wanted to give it more of that feminine energy counter and yeah. and talk about hope. You know, we, but it's, it's not just because I, th I think when people get to that place of desperation, when you feel hopeless, when you feel, you know, there's so many issues that we face, you know, as indigenous people. And I know we're not unique, but coming from the Diné Nation, you know, there was area, regions that were having packed suicides, kids that were, you know, maybe eight, nine years of age committing suicide. And that, that was something that really affected us greatly, you know, and, you know, lost lots of family to, to suicide, you know, to substance abuse and all different, you know, I guess, factors, things that are from colonization, things that, you know, we, we're trying to figure out how do we address the symptom, the root cause, as if, you know, we're looking at it from a holistic traditional perspective of we see here are the problems. It's easy to identify these problems, but how do we go to the source? Where, where is that source? And how do we, we start to heal and mend that? And that's part of where, where we identify you know, culture being that tool, being that mechanism, whether it's ceremony, song, you know, our, our traditional singers are called Hatafi. So contemporary, we can write a song about that and we can try to bring healing by talking about it, by communicating and opening that, that door and then bringing youth in and, and uplifting, empowering and, sh and showing them that there's other alternatives, you know, within your community. You know, and the, part of the reason why we like to do, even when we perform, you know, it was always about let's perform to all ages. Let's not uh, discriminate. We don't want to play in bars or clubs where it's 21 and up because that's sending the wrong message, you know. So every action and things that we took were, you know, thought out, you know, carefully to, to in be inclusive and to ensure that everybody was able to connect with that message. I love that. That's really important, that inclusiveness. Yeah, it's super powerful that uh, you guys changed the, your approach of educating people from a combative kind of uh, way to a more inclusive oh. and uh, like, promoting hope and that's so powerful like whenever we first like we're thinking of our mission for a smudge for your thoughts we we're saying uh we want to combat uh negative stereotypes but i think it's mm -hmm. way more powerful to say we want to promote respect and understanding and it's it's way i think that's just a, a more powerful message than com going out there and like guns ho and sometimes you have to be combative yeah but, sometimes um, yeah but like but yeah i i, I completely understand and like, I really respect that you guys, you know, yeah. and it's different state. Like, everyone goes through different stages, too. Mm -hmm. um, but well, it, even it's beautiful. If you think of, like, the concept of smudging, you know, to use, you know, fire or that element, and then to, to use that medicine, whatever, you know, so many different tribes or, you know, whatever tobacco or, or ways of cleansing, you know, that's a process of, of preparing for a clear thought process, you know, you're yeah. releasing, you're washing off any negativity. So it's, it's funny, you know, those, those balances in the Navajo way, we have and Anadje. we have the beauty way and the enemy way. And it's this balance of, you know, choosing, you know, how do we protect ourselves or how do we, you know, give the element of life and, yeah. and support that life. But they're both, side by side kind of like yin and yang yeah so it's a beautiful name that you have you know it's because you're you're addressing you know okay we release you know you you cleanse yeah but you in order to cleanse sometimes you have to go through there that process you have yeah. to release it you have to 
get it out. I love that. As negative yeah. as it might be. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's where we are right now, right? The world uh-huh. is going Definitely. through this cleansing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Um, I love all the words you've said about that. Be- yeah. Like he said, we, we went through that phase of being more combative and then now it, we feel more like pure. I There's, guess. you know, for, for us as, you know, with our family, we went through a really intense time. And I think that that's for us, you know, the the end of our last band, Blackfire, was also the same time that um, that we lost our lawsuit against the the federal government, where um, to protect a holy mountain and to protect young endocrine systems from reclaimed wastewater. And so we were in the midst of continuously being sued by a ski resort for you know for over what was it a quarter of a million dollars for trying to disbar you know our attorney all of these things and then there was also the youth packed suicides and I think that you know Clayson and I we made a conscious effort like we were just like really for me that was the most um probably emotionally um drained the most completely just drain like I I didn't have anything anymore I was so um I was so depressed like and I and I would and it was a huge consideration of you know I've been angry my entire life and I've had every right to be angry my entire life but what comes next where am I like anger has had defined me so much growing up being you know being on the front lines and, and activism, being um, being a voice, you know, for against relocation and against the coal mine, and and always being against, against, against. That I had to, you know, it was this personal um, kind of journey, like what you're talking about, where it's wait, we changed the words. Mm-hmm. What am I for? Yeah, you know, I'm I. I, you know, what comes after anger and Clayson and I, we decided, well, hope, hope yeah. comes after anger. Like it has to be hope. And so that's um, where, where Seahausen was kind of, you know, I don't know, birthed. I, I say yeah. birth cause I'm a, <laughs> I'm a so, mom. Yeah. So you're a mother. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's a perfect, I think it's a great word to describe it when it was birthed. Yeah. you know, into the world <laughs> is that idea. That what, are, was, what are those kinds of, uh, those birds that like are, are like in Harry Potter where he catches on fire. Oh, they, like a Phoenix, a Phoenix uh, yeah, yeah. rising yeah. from the ash, yeah. rising yeah. from the ashes. Yeah. He has, uh, uh, fighting there. And then now you're coming out uh, anew. Yeah. And yes. we, our band was called black fire. That was one that of the names sense. I was considering. I was like, do we, do we call ourselves Phoenix or something? Yeah. <laughs> We're just uh, both the Phoenix. And then people will be like, yeah, oh, you're from, from Phoenix, Phoenix huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're like, no, it's not that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, uh, so thank you guys for your beautiful words. And um, so our next question is, um, and we already discussed this, but what inspires you to do what you do? You already kind of talked about it, but. Love. I Love I wake up every morning. Me. Every morning. Every morning I'm up, you know, I can't sleep. You know, for some reason the, the sun it it gets me out of bed and I feel energized, feel that creative spark. For some people it's like the complete opposite where you know it's like in the evening, but for me, mm. that first light, that first energy that the sun gives off, and I, I wake up, I go out and greet it, and you know, just put out my intention and and my thought for the day of, okay, you know, my, my daughter, my family, you know, we've, we've got animals and livestock, you know, I've got horses and they, they get me up and out, you know, physically, you've got to go out and take care of them. And when you're a youth growing up, I don't think you realize the importance that that teaching is. And, you know, I, I really wanted to instill that into my kids. So ensuring that we have animals and that, self-sufficiency here where we live, you know, that's integral, you know, to, to life for me, you know, it's teaching lessons of how to put others first, put, you know, respect and for their lives, you know, that is a great responsibility and 
growing up with sheep. I, I know for some tribes they have like buffalo or things like that, but the sheep, that's really part of our, our life way, our culture. So just a lot of, you know, just the, the energy and the intense intention of waking up and praying for, for that moisture, praying for that rain, praying for the balance of the earth and for the land, all those teachings that our ancestors and our, our grandparents gifted to us, you know, those are things that, you know, really keep me balanced and whole and focused on what I got to accomplish. Nice. Love it. Yeah. I think that, you know, for me personally, I I'm really inspired by, by love, um, by not, not, not like a romantic kind of yeah. love, but, but truly just loving, um, you know, my family loving, loving the fact that I get to be on the land, um, loving the fact that, that there's that you know, that there's community work to be done, you know, and, um, which is so much of, of my purpose is, um, so that's that, yeah, I think that's what most inspires me is that I realize that, um, that we have so much work to do. We have mm -hmm. so much work to do. We want to, you know, create, create a planet that is still inhabitable for, for our seven generations, then we have to work really hard at it because there's so much that needs to be undone. And even uh, like my brother talking about earlier about our, our cultural teachings, um, so much of that has been lost, um, you know, and it's, it's nobody's, it's, it's not our parents' fault. It's not our grandparents' fault. It's, but it's like the, um, it, you know, but it's, it's, it's the institution, the systematic, mm -hmm um prejudices and racism that exist that have really kind of you know created this this um this loss this this um this missing part of who we are as indigenous people so so i i'm really um inspired by um motivating our youth to to learn those teachings and you know and 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 it's you know we have to we have to be very careful about it today you know there's technology and technology is fantastic it's an amazing tool but it's also not um it's not personal and so it's finding different ways of how do we make um how do we how do we make our culture accessible and personal for our youth where they where it becomes a part of them that they want to carry on rather than something that they're they're reading or they're absorbing yeah that makes sense like rather than like a show they're watching or they're just like entertained by it or like absorbing it like you said um but like becomes a part of who well, they are yeah part of the challenge becomes you know today there's appropriation and people that will exploit True. so that knowledge if you put something out there that's sacred or that's meant mm -hmm. to be handed on like a family heirloom to the next generation and it's not just for the, the entire world to, mm -hmm. to see and understand you know that's where that balance of like mm -hmm. how do we share or transmit this information but be be aware of those dangers yeah and every we, community we. i think is is trying to address this you know we, we've got so many indigenous brothers and sisters that are wanting to, to learn, but accessing elders or knowledge keepers that have that information, but how do they connect, you know, mm -hmm. especially in this time of COVID, we have that, you know, there, there's protocol that's supposed to be in place to protect those elders and those wisdom keepers, because they are of that vulnerable population and we want them to be safe so they can continue to tell those stories. Yeah. And so it's, it's a tricky world. I, I know we've lost so many already in our in our community with COVID-19 and our nation is in lockdown again. And I'm not sure how it is up in your region, you know, when it comes to language or ceremonies and, and this, this knowledge that is so crucial that it needs to be passed on. It needs to connect. Back in Rocky boy. I mean, uh, it, that's, uh, similar all across Indian country, uh, what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I know the cases are, going up and up and up and it's just it's really sad what's happening like we're we are we have lost elders and we have lost like those traditional teachings and 
it's it, it is sad that we're that we're losing that kind of stuff because of this uh and that they weren't passed on i mean it's Things like you said it, it is a, a a lot of work and we got to know that work is actually there um we got to educate ourselves and we got to um do what we got to do to keep on going i think Absolutely. for for a lot of our communities yeah. it's when you have a a knowledge keeper, an elder that kind of paves that way for you. They lead by example, you know, growing up with our dad, whenever we go to family or relatives house, you know, everybody would welcome you. The, the matriarch or the people that, you know, the household would always sit down and prepare a meal. You know, you come in and, you know, if there was a TV around, actually there were there no, no TVs back then in our region, no electricity. So, all attention was given to that that conversation that dialogue and today it's like uh, you know before pre-covid you know you go to somebody's household and they keep the tv on and there's just continuously noise and distractions and it's hard to to connect and i, I know that's one of the bigger issues socially you know as as a human race is you know we've got all these gadgets and technology we're supposed to be you know connecting more personally, you know, we're supposed to have that real one-on-one -on -one experience, but it seems that things have gotten further and further. And I know being in media, that's your format, you're, you're essentially storytellers and, and trying to bring people together to listen. You know, it's like that, it's like that fire, that flame in the middle of the room that would captivate people. I and love that. that's, the hardest thing today is to vie for that attention and to bring it full circle so everybody can just sit down and, and be heard to hear uh -huh. each other. I love that um, analogy. Analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Um, you know, between what we're doing and, you know, we're, we are storytellers and I, I really like that. But it, it is hard to make it um, to like get that attention and have people focus on the stories. And I think we've got some great guests to like hold people in like you guys yeah some great you know great stories to be told you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and it's amazing you know obviously technology can be used like just yesterday we were you know going from brazil with seems sao paulo with uh, this music conference and yeah. being online you know connecting with with person with actual people there on the other side in brazil then in New Mexico and, and throughout indigenous communities with the Native and, yeah, American. Yeah, and then five American minutes Indian later, we were business. in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's crazy. We're like, wow, this is amazing. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then and then doing some pre-records and realizing that, wow, this is, you know, even though I, I miss touring, I miss being personal with folks, I am actually really loving that we can be so many different places and have such a reduced carbon footprint. Yeah, um, like, true. like this is always, you know, in a sense as, as an artist, it's always been a dream of mine to be able to, um, to perform from, from, you know, from our home, from our homeland and, and bring people, you know, to, to see where, where does our music come from? What is the context that this art is being created? And, you know, and, and I think that, It'll be hard to go back. I mean, it'll be wonderful <laughs> to start <laughs> touring again and to like to hug people and yeah. see people's smiles, you know. Um, but but until then, you know, I think that that's part of who we are as Indigenous people. And I and and I do want to extend the fact that as Indigenous people, we are all on our Mama Earth. We are all Indigenous people. We all have an umbilical cord that ties us to some place. And so it's reconnecting and kind of reinvigorating um, that that bond, I you know, that. That, that we have with our Mother Earth. And so, and, uh, and so, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> no, I had to talk to about that, Janita, that. Janita is speaking from from our our Sihasen Hogan home stage. Ho, Hogan Hogan literally means um, home, and okay. that construction that she's in that that dwelling is a reflection of the earth and and of the four sacred mountains but 
Maybe you could give them a quick tour, but that was the sure. intention. Oh my gosh, it. it's so messy to, in here. I have equipment <laughs> everywhere. It's like the equipment exploded. Clearly. But it's, it's funny because that, that was the intention is to bring- The equipment exploded, okay. To it's bring really... people into our home and to, to give them those cultural teachings and to carry on. And that's part of the reason why, why we constructed it. And now it's definitely fulfilling its purpose you know, we've got cold months here in Arizona. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's cactus, it's warm, but but it gets cold. We do get winter. Yeah. Yeah. Especially we're up in Flagstaff, up in right? Yeah. Higher altitude up there in Flagstaff, right? Definitely. We're yeah. up at seven thousand feet up here. Dang. So it's just it's beautiful. And we are um at the shadow of the holy San Francisco peaks, which which go above 12,000 feet Ooh. in height. Wow. Um, I really like what you said. Uh, I just want to touch on it about everyone on this earth. Like everyone has a connection to the earth, like an umbilical cord. And a lot of ours are severed. And it, like you guys as Dene are so, or Dene, you're lucky and other native um, cultures around the Americas are so lucky that that you have that connection still so ingrained. It's sad that a lot of people like non-natives, you know, look have a you know, bad perspective or kind of like a very simplified perspective of native culture and people like me like a white person or other non-natives um are like kind of I feel like judgmental to people who still have that connection because they see it as like in the past or like a past way of living, but it's like, it can be a part of contemporary life, but just having that connection to the earth. Yeah. And, uh, we, we actually living. had the opportunity to go to Poland where on our, our chase. Did go. On our, yes. Yeah. yeah on I our want to go so bad, but we were amazed. We were blown away. We were in Białystok where our grandmother or our grandfather was from in okay. Poland, but we went to um, a region not far from there where they had bison, the, the original bison herd from, from that region. And we were surprised because like everybody had these like uh, sweet grass braids, just like, you know, in the That's Dakotas. That's what Berta was saying. In the yeah. plains. And we're like, what is this for? And they're like, <laughs> oh, this is sweet grass. And we just uh, braid it like this and we put it in our vodka. It's <laughs> a little bit different. Yeah. But then from but there. It's, but it's their like, traditional way. Yeah, yeah. It's like their medicine is <laughs> a different kind. We went to like <laughs> this ancient forest grove where there was like oak trees that were planted for the kings. And this park that we had gone to had a Tarpazian horse, which is like one of the oldest original breeds of horses before, wow. you know, they kind of moved throughout the, mm -hmm. the rest of the world. And the roots and the, the culture, the connection is incredible you know there's yeah. so much rich history and it, it's not that it was erased or you know of course we have colonization and mm -hmm. in all forms you know mm -hmm. it, it didn't just hit us as indigenous people here yeah. in america we're looking at indigenous cultures all throughout europe mm -hmm. from the sami the brege the yeah. Breton, to, you know Garlanche. the Gal galician people all these different celtic tribes and you know, we know that as indigenous people, our, our ways, our traditions were connected with the earth, with the land, and they were based on a more respectful way, you know, yeah. the natural law that we all s still, you know, we still utilize that. That's yeah. something that we haven't lost. And I know people are hungry for that. They're trying to connect. Yeah. And it's, it's important for them to understand that those, those things have not been severed entirely. You know, it's, mm -hmm. there is that connection as long this is what my my father and our elders would teach is that as long as you're breathing the air as long as you're drinking the water as long as you're eating food from this earth you know you have not lost that connection you are still that. a part of this earth there's mm -hmm. still that hope that see <laughs> uh, but yeah like the hope like you know to you can still reconnect fully i like that you, it's never severed right that's cool Definitely not. And I think that, you know, we've been, Clayson and I have been blessed to tour throughout the world. And, and one of, uh, one of 
some of the places that, that we really enjoy going and we seek out touring to are probably the most remote places where you wouldn't expect, you know, a Diné rock band to go. <laughs> <laughs> but we love to go to um, to places that are still um, that are still rural, that are still, you know, cultural strongholds. And and it's incredible to to really see um, in a lot of these cultural strongholds where, you know, these, these traditional peoples throughout the world, that it's still, that their cultures still exist, their traditional sciences still exist, um, the language still exists, and that, uh, that they are, that they are consistently trying to find ways to, to bring their culture to the future generations. Yeah, I, I really like that uh, you brought that up, because we're so similar uh, to people all around the world, and it's it's super important to like see that we're we're all a part of this earth, and we're we all have a, a story to tell, and we all um, are like still trying to figure out our way. Can uh, I ask you like uh, what uh, places like you specifically you went to to uh, and that they were trying to uh, do what they were doing? So some of the places that we've been to, like um, way up north and with the Sami nation, um, they are doing amazing work. They started a university and are doing a lot more cultural work as well. And whereas it used to be- That's in Norway, Finland, and Sweden. That's what I was gonna say, Russia. Sami. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a university there um, and so, you know, and, and we have friends who are artists as well, who are, who are yoikers and, and they're utilizing their traditional yoiking with contemporary instruments to, you know, um, to create this amazing new sound. We've been to um, places, um, there, we were in Sinaloa in Mexico, where there are tribes that are trying to recreate they have they have the history of um they have the history only orally of of what certain um like uh, hats or headdresses used to look like but they piece it together from other tribes around um we've been to um where we've been to well actually in switzerland the ramash people who are striving to uh, to continue their traditional language that exists in Switzerland. Um, and so they have their you know, radio show as well, um, doing different work. Um, also in, in uh, Mali, Africa, um, there are clinics, I mean, this, this is in the past, you know, there's been war, there is war there now. So it's, it's, everything is probably very different, but uh, traditional clinics that people could go to, um, they didn't just have to go to an allopathic hospital, cool. but they could be seen by a traditional practitioner. Um, even in France, in Britannia, Breton, there are um, the British, the, the Breton people are, um, working incredibly hard to hold on to their Brage language and to their customs and to their cultural identity. And they're still fighting against France for sovereignty. And in Germany, there um, are so many different areas. Um, it, we, we were, we've been privileged to be able to tour um, not long after um, the wall fell um, that was separating East from West okay, yeah. in Europe. And so we've, you know, as, as we've grown up touring, we've also been able to experience and see the changes that have come. And so it, it's been really interesting with Germany too, because it's like every, every community, every town has their own colors. They have their own dances, their own songs. And so, so we see we see people holding on to that as well, and I think that what I think keeps happening, because I've always felt you know I, I always have seen myself as a punk, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I've always been like you know I I play punk music, yeah. and I realized that you know 
Well, it's not very different than folk music. Folk music is the people's music, which is mm. what world music is. And so, <laughs> yeah. so I keep, you know, we keep kind of getting drawn to these interconnections, these, these uh, intersections of cultures where we have the, the amazing opportunity to meet other artists who are working hard to continue to carry our cultures, our indigenous, I'm talking about our global community indigenous yes. cultures yeah. and our global community indigenous languages and our traditional sciences. I love that. Uh, that's such an amazing thing, I'm sure, to see all those different intersections and really be able to grasp the concept that we really are all one indigenous community. I mean, we have our own all different cultures, um, some stronger than others, but we are, you know, one big community living here on Earth. Absolutely. And it's, you know, and it's, if anything, I hope that when, when people hear our music or um, when they see our dance performances, we always hope that people get inspired to reconnect with their own indigenous roots, um, because it's really important, you know, let be, be inspired by the cultures that you see, be inspired by the strength of the cultures that you see, but don't appropriate those cultures. Yes. Um, let it inspire some, let it inspire you. So that way yeah. you want to learn about your own roots. And yeah, if there's many, that's amazing. That only means that you're a stronger tree and mm -hmm. that you can fruit more branches and that you can fruit more creativity. Yes, um, like for me, for instance, you know, after dating Tony for four years now, about, um, it's just inspired me to connect much more to my Polish roots. Like I, I see how beautiful it is for him to be connected to his traditions. And I'm like, oh, I have my own. I need to like, you know, reconnect. And I like what you say about let it inspire you to get connected to your roots. It's and I also really have German complicated and Spanish, here but. growing up as a youth in America, where as an indigenous person, oftentimes you're invisibilized. Like, I don't know how many times, you know, we've been told when we're doing like a march or a protest or some sort of action. And, you know, they're saying, okay, here's your free speech zone. You can be invisible over here. We don't want people to see you. And that's kind of the, the ongoing sort of mentality is like, you know, that as indigenous people, we we're here, but most people don't even see us. We don't exist. You know, we're off on the reservations or yes. maybe they see just only some of the negative reinforced stereotypes for mm -hmm. different social, you know, injustices that we're, we're still combating and trying to, to, to find those solutions. But when we find that, you know, especially Europeans, you know, you go to the Navajo reservation and most of the tourists that are coming through you know, predominantly from Europe, you know, and there's that interest, there's excitement, and people want to learn more, then it, it really does place value on our culture. But sometimes it takes other people looking at you and, and valuing you first, you know, if, if you think you're worthless, and you there's no value, and you're used to this, you know, superpower of a country overshadowing and, you know, trying to dismantle your dignity, your sovereignty, you know, and rape the land and take all, all of your riches, you know, and, and view you only as a resource that of course, you know, it's like, you're never going to be able to grow and be that beautiful, self-sufficient, dignified person, you know, but when you see other people come and they, they respect you and they, they honor your traditions and your ways, you know, which, which is what we find when we tour outside of the United States, because there's, there's so much of a more positive outlook towards yeah. indigenous people you know here in the states we could go to any place any part of this this country and people would be like oh you're you're an indian yeah you're still alive you yeah know, you we're all killed off by john wayne yeah you know? or like yeah. oh do you live in you in done? like in teepees and only like ride around yeah. on horseback and like yeah. stuff like that yeah that's, and please tell real. me that your middle name is pocahontas yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah I, Why is that real? You know, but yeah. you go to Europe or other places, and people are educated, and they want to know. Yeah, but they oh, want to know, like, 
like what are the struggles and the causes and how can they get involved and I love that you know do more to help out the community so there's been such a, a huge tremendous outpour of support you know you look at the country of Ireland and you know how they you know gave really, yeah. back to some of the communities during COVID you know this this time of crisis and it's it's incredible that you know we we do live in a global society mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to think like global citizens and and you know we, we've been to the United Nations you know to try to speak about the atrocities or the the abuses that the United States government have done to our people and you know just going through the court systems that's reaffir reaffirming unfortunately of, of how that discrimination still exists here yeah it plays and I think you touched on a really important point too of, you know it's like this human condition of of worthlessness that we're, that's projected on so many people which is you know the stereotype it's you know something that we we grow up with i think you know as i think that it's it's learned as youth that this is this is who you are and we're going to tell you your story we're going to tell you your your native american story and it's going to be in this paragraph and you know if you disagree with it then you're you're not learning history and we're going to fail you you know yeah, and so right. it's like so we're in this really incredible time where we're able to connect with each other and we're also able to to tell our own stories and right. and our voices are being heard and that's kind of in in some aspect it's 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 a little unnerving it's like wow yeah. wait a minute whoa you can hear me? yeah you can yeah. Hear me? i'm off mute <laughs> <laughs> so we've uh pretty much touched on all of our questions that we had uh but we wanted to talk uh a little bit about uh no thanks no giving uh that uh berta had uh, mentioned a little bit uh can you just expand on that you know i i don't really um i don't celebrate thanksgiving okay per se. Yeah. um and um so it's not to me, it, it, it's just another day, day yeah. um, although it is an important day of education, I feel, um, just as Indigenous Peoples Day is, is that when there is a day when eyes are turned onto the Indigenous peoples of, of a land, that we take the opportunity to step up to the mic um, and to be able to tell our stuff, our side of, of history or her story. And so, you know, so for me, it's, 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 it's really just kind of an opportunity to talk. I like that. <laughs> I like that. No, that's, that's important. And to educate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's plus, good. You know, oh, the go myth, ahead. the whole myth that Thanksgiving is built on when the colonizers and the pilgrims did massacre a village and take that winter surplus that this community had had in order to prepare and make it through the winter when they were massacred that village that community of pilgrims had given thanks and that was the first kind of um usage of the word for thanksgiving was was after that massacre and annihilating an entire uh region of of indigenous people so they may survive and that's what they were giving thanks for so sometimes when we look at the myths that that these you know they sound so beautiful and we want to teach kids in kindergarten we, we were actually in northern or in southern california at university of berkeley i believe and we were prof no not on use university of berkeley um oh, i trying to remember the name of the university but we we're performing and we heard about this protest that was taking place was, you know, something in Claremont where they marched kids um, from one school to another. And each year the schools would trade off. One would dress up like Indians, the other like pilgrims. So uh, we, we were involved in this protest and went to, to counter protest this, this event. And since it, it seemed like it was infringing on the rights of these young children in this community of Claremont, California, it became a huge national story. This was like, you know, probably 10 or 15 years back, I want to say, at least 15 years back. At least 15 and, years, yeah. and we had 
try to like put the news out about our our lawsuit and how this was impacting all tribes, all 560 or 70 plus federally recognized tribes, you know, when we were in the courts and and trying to unify the different tribes. And that was like a huge news, newsworthy story. We couldn't get coverage. We couldn't even get democracy now to cover our, our angle, our story and share what was happening and the desecration of our sacred site. Yet, you know, here we go to show up at it to support the community and counter protest this, this ongoing event. And all of a sudden it was like on every single major news network and it was just like so superficial to us it's like this is not the real story this is yeah this is all just a a myth that you know is but as soon as it felt like it infringed on their freedoms and their ability to to parade their kids around in these costumes right oh yeah they're gonna get up outraged yeah Mm -hmm. it was frustrating i i I can definitely see that yeah you know it changes changes never change is rarely comfortable and exactly. you know we we in this in this western society have have continued down a path of of really of ignorance of manifest destiny of um of invisibilizing indigenous peoples and our and our sciences and so you know i think that it's it's when when now now that you know now that indigenous peoples are being seen here in America, it is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you know, it should be, it should absolutely be uncomfortable because there are uncomfortable truths that do exist and that have caused intergenerational trauma that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And if we can't talk about the root problems, Mm -hmm. then we can't fully heal. And so it's, so yes, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Yeah. But you know what? Everything is. Every and so change, we, yeah. we move through it and we work together and we communicate and we build bridges um, rather than, than going with our fears and, and the, stere- the stereotypes that exist that, you know, that are fed by fears. Right. But I, I actually had a stereotype about racism. This is a kind of an interesting story. When we went okay. to Bialystok to Poland to go to the place of our grandfathers on, on our mother's side, it was incredible to me that the village, our, our grandfather was Ashkenazi, Eastern European Jewish. Okay. And he fled during the 1918 Russian revolution when the czar said, you know, every Jewish person, person should be slaughtered. And a Russian soldier came into to the household with a bloody ax and was ready to kill our family. And they invited them. My, my great grandmother invited this this soldier in he was Whoa. had been drinking and he had a bloodied axe and he was getting ready to to kill the family and she said you look tired why don't you come in you know wow. you're, you're you're obviously hungry come sit with our family dinner is prepared and they sat and they showed their humanity and they laughed and they joked and at the end he set the axe on the table and he said i I've killed eight families with this ax tonight alone and I can't do it anymore. Thank you for, for bringing me into your house and for, for showing me your humanity, your love. And, and he left. And after that, our great grandmother said, all right, we're out of here to pack up the family. Yeah. <laughs> this is our <laughs> chance. Right. But, but we, we actually, there. we, we have went that to that act. village. Okay. And we went to that village. And I was surprised. It was called Antinukas outside of Galashtok. And I saw a swastika. A, a swastika, of course, it's an indigenous yeah. symbol, which it represents the four winds. It's yeah. not just for Navajo. You'll see it in, in sand painting, ceremonial depictions, but you'll see it utilized also like in Tibetan or Eastern yeah. philosophies. And it represents that four winds. <clears throat> but of course, it, it goes counter, it goes the opposite, mm-hmm. the negative wind, mm-hmm. the dark wind. But for us, for me, when I went to this this community, I asked people in Poland because I was like, "What what is with this swastika? Why is that even here in Poland?" Because everybody knows historically the Nazi regime attacked and invaded Poland, and one of the ways that they they actually, you know, were able to to be successful and not have the rest of Europe, 
you know, come to their aid was because they, the, the propaganda, the Polish jokes, you know, everybody knows like all these Polish jokes, at least, you know, um, I'm a child of the seventies. So it seems like a younger generation all understood, okay, there's these degrading jokes that try to show that Polish people were, were not worthwhile or not worthy in some way. And therefore, you know, by disseminating these jokes, you know, you can, you know, it was okay for, for Nazi Germany to invade and to, to, to conquer this nation. Yeah. But when we're, I was there and I asked, why is there this swastika on this, this wall in this, in this village? And they're like, um, yes, the Nazis came and they, they saw us as basically literally the, the trash or whatever, you know, but today it's younger generations aligning with racism and i didn't think you know because i thought all europeans are white people right yeah i thought okay you got you know <laughs> white people that's that's yeah. caucasian yeah but then i realized no when they were starting to talk about the the walls of separation they were talking about at the next border you have the russian federation and you have further eastern european communities that are more impoverished and they come they come and they take our jobs and that's where it hit, you know, it's like, it's more about class. It's more about, you know, these separations of division, you know, come down to whether people have money or don't have money. You know, it's like Power. America and Mexico. Yeah. And it was like, wow, you know, white people hate white people. Wait, wait. I, I know they hate <laughs> Jewish people that are, you know, but how is this even possible? Yeah. And it just, the illusion that I had of what racism was, you know, it's like, the oppressed, the downtrodden, those people that feel like somebody else is, is trying to take what is theirs and they're already hurting, you know, it's, it's dangerous. It's easy to manipulate. And that's what we've seen here in America. We've seen a whole administration play on the vulnerability of, of people that feel oppressed. They feel, you know, they, mm -hmm. you know, yes, they're being, you know, whatever minority group you are in your community you know, when, when somebody has more or, or takes, or, you know, there's not a balance and it's not reciprocal, you know, that's where we have these, these, these issues that can blow up, you know, and how do we heal and how do we make it like a full circle, like indigenous teachings where we have the four directions, where we have mm -hmm. all sacred colors balanced and equal sharing, communicating, working together, not one stronger than the other, everything's in that harmony. And that's with plants, with animals, with all, all insects and life forms on this planet is those four sacred colors all coming together and in balance. You know, that's, that's something beautiful that, that, you know, as an indigenous person, you know, I, I have that ability to, to look at that. That's my model. That's what yeah. I, I see can be obtained and what is already there. It's just the imbalances and how do we bring those pieces back to make it whole yeah. again? Wow. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for everything that you're talking about. Thank but you guys uh, so our much. last question is uh, what uh, do you want to let our audience know about your tribe, community, or your any final, final thoughts? thoughts? Any kind of anything that we've gone over or anything that you just want to leave uh, the audience thinking about? Yeah. Do you want to go first, Clayson? Of, or I'll, I'll go after you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so some final thoughts that, that I have to leave the listening audience with is, you know, especially about our people is that we are, we are strong. We are resilient, that we are utilizing, I think, you know, during the pandemic, we're utilizing every re resource that we can in order to survive. And pre-pandemic, um, that we are resilient, that we are survivors. And post-pandemic, that we are resilient and we are survivors and that we still maintain a cultural stronghold within our communities. And, and it's, and, it's um, and I think that right now as people are locking down at least i know with my family we are taking this time to go inward 
and to really focus on teaching our culture and our traditional sciences and our language to to our our next generations and so we're we're we've all been hit really hard um on so many different levels but we are surviving and we will survive and and that's i think that's my my um it's it's not just for us as Diné people but it's for us as indigenous people it's that we've been through this we've been through we've been through struggle we've been through torment um we've been through happiness and we've been through everything that you can imagine you know going back to the the beginning of our our uh creation that we've experienced these things and that we are here because of our ancestors resilience because they didn't give up this breath that i have right now comes from my ancestors this heartbeat that i have right now this comes from my ancestors too and we have to always remember that with that mindset we move forward with that spirit of resilience with that thought and that gratitude to our ancestors we move forward and we move forward for the honor and the dignity of our future generations yes great words i know thank you for for me i just want to obviously encourage you all smudge for your thoughts the work that you're doing just to empower and to keep going you know obviously you. you're storytellers and there's that i don't want to say an obligation yeah. but you know to to bring voice and you know help assist in in the communities and i know we're we're just a small region as the Na navajo in all, all the time, I think whenever you, you meet somebody from the Navajo Reservation, there's a lot of tortoise eating, a lot of bitter water. <laughs> but, you know, each each clan, you know, each each of our people that we have a story and it's our place of connection. It's just remembrance and reconnecting. But from there, you know, it's, you know, I, I think a lot of people try to, they struggle internally, especially right now, you know, with confinement or solitude, you know, there's there's a lot of hardship that people see it seems like we face but that's I, I say when we it seems like we face but it's when it comes to the things that are worthwhile you know when we as a spiritual person there's always that kind of sacrifice you go into the sweat lodge touch a in our way is what we call it and you go into the heat you know you you give whatever you're your troubles or your hardships are you give you feed you know that that fire that heat you know the the things that are exhausting that are tormenting or the, the negative things you don't need to carry those weights those burdens and the things that you know when, when we sacrifice and you fast or you do something that that kind of gives a, something of yourself you put yourself last you know you put others first you know that's the mindset that we need to be at right now we're we're putting children we're putting elders we're putting our community first and we're wearing a mask where we're wearing you know ppe protective equipment yeah. when we go to visit or not visit our family and we ensure their protection so that's something that's really important at this time is that people adhere to those protocols and ensure that you know they're you know I know we have comforts, we have our zones, our range, but sometimes you have to put yourself out of your own comfort and put others first at this time. Right. Yes. Thank you for saying that. That's really important, especially coming up to this time of the year. That mm -hmm. people, you know, people are getting together. Um, um, we got to put our elders and our children, of, you know, the younger generation ahead of ourselves. So that's important. Yeah. Um, thank you. Guys. Definitely keep. Keep oh. following us on social media. Yes. And yeah. We'll try to do the same to support. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I, we'd love to to network. And I know you we're hoping to have other indigenous communities and perspectives. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll do what we can as cool. a resource to, Thank to you. Help, help you all out there. Awesome. Thanks. Oh, uh, and on that, uh, what are your 
your <laughs> like your website where, where, could where people can people find, find, yeah. find right. you right where can we connect with y'all um you can connect with us through our website which is old school because we have a website www.sihasin.com sihasin.com we also have social media platforms as well we have Facebook, which is Seahawson. We have a couple, we also have a, a Seahawson group um, oh, cool. as well, which um, which we're trying to, we're experimenting, you know, with okay. technology and, yeah. and kind of trying to just create more of a community. Um, you make it group. sound really old. You make it sound old when you say we're experimenting with technology. <laughs> well, no, we're experimenting with having a group, some... with our group. Janita <laughs> Benali, my uh, Instagram, Janita Benali, Facebook. I'm Clayton Benali. You can <laughs> definitely continue to follow us there. Instagram, you know, C. Hassan yeah. underscore yeah. band. Perfect. There you go. There we That's go. Us. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Be, be sure to check out their experimentations. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but seriously, check them out. Um, uh-huh. They're also on Spotify and I think iTunes. And right? oh, yeah. We are on okay. iTunes. We're on, uh, um, you can find our music and all kinds of different platforms yeah. online. Watch the YouTube and videos. And also you can They're actually beautiful. get like an album too. We've got albums, CDs. Ooh, if you're yeah, vinyl. It's actual tangible That's substance. a huge thing now. That's but cool. I always that, love like the artwork. Like when you yeah, open up an like album having and a, you look at the, uh-huh. the graphic layouts and there's uh-huh. so much to it and it's an actual substance, you know? Yeah. It's not just something that can disappear Streaming when your hard drive dies. Fails right. And, you yeah. know, and, and album art is so important. It's, you know, we, cause for us, we, we really wanted to, um, we, we took a lot of time with our album art because we wanted to invite people into our world. Yeah. Um, we wanted people to see what, what our world was like. Um, so yeah, so we have, we have the tangible <laughs> music that, that you can hold in your hand. Yes. Um, never surrender and fight like a woman. They're beautiful artwork, album artwork. So yeah, people should definitely go check it out and buy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. you. We also want to encourage people to, um, as well on our YouTube, we are, what we're, what we've started working on is, um, ways to continue, you know, kind of a punk rock way of carrying on your culture. Cool. Ooh, I like that. It's like, and a- I'm a little slow at editing. Cause I'm like figuring all this out. It's you hard. know, I used to be a musician, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but as all musicians are today, we're all having to learn, you know, how yeah, to, you yeah. know, how to be videographers, how yeah. to be editors, yep. and, yeah. you know, how to do sound. Know, Janita, and Janita keeps referring to punk rock. I, I don't consider myself a punk rocker anymore. It's like music is just a common it's it's an energy form and it it transcends Ooh, all boundaries whether I like that. your country hip hop you know the music and the the things that we draw inspiration from it it it's universal so please you know don't let one <laughs> category like don't don't think, be just deterred think, by okay, punk wait, but I do I but I definitely yeah I definitely see the punkness in it but it has a lot of different like you're right there it's a lot of different like you can't really pinpoint it to a specific genre. That's true. Mm-hmm. And I just do want to say that when I say, when I reference punk rock, that punk it's rock the is an attitude. Yeah. And it's not a genre. And that's like how against, I see punk rock. Yeah, it's like against the against the man, fight against the man kind of thing, <laughs> it's right? It's true. Or the institution. It's the institution, it's like, yeah. It's, 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 it's being raw, brave yeah. enough to, to be, you know, to be truthful. I like and that. And sometimes that's abrasive. But, you know, that's punk rock. That's what punk rock is to okay. me. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Clayson's like, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just thinking of an analogy, like, where she's like oh, okay. the sandpaper and I'm the, I'm the, the polished smooth stone over Ooh. there because of the abrasiveness. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why we work together well, Clayson. <laughs> yeah, you, you sand yeah. them out. <laughs> I don't know if I'm so polished, though. But. <laughs> You guys are both polished in my uh-huh. eyes, <laughs> but it's, it maybe it, hey, that's the the polish and the um, sandpaper is like the two, and or, or the um, what did you say, the enemy way and the and the, uh, the beauty way. Beauty, beauty way. way. There you go. They work together. <laughs> yeah, Clayson's a whole lot more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you guys are both beautiful. Um, I I had such a great time getting to know you guys, and definitely want to stay in touch. Um, yep. So, yeah, definitely stay in touch, and um, I can't wait till we release this. Thank you so much for having luck. us. We are so we're so excited to to support your platform and, you. in whatever Thank way you. we can. And we are so grateful that you're, you know, for your support of, of independent and you know indigenous music. So thank you. Well, thank you. you. Had, my my horses are super angry with me right oh. now. Like, go oh, no. feed me. I got oh, some cows no. to go feed too. Okay. Okay. All right. So See you guys. Off. See you. It was thank so good you, to get to know you guys. Oh. Did you say Miigwech? Miigwech. Miigwech. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Miigwech. hi. And, hi, yeah. hi. Miigwech. Yeah. All right. Thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. Um, as always, thank you for your support, um, for tuning in, doing all the likes and shares that you do. Um, you can check out more info and more links on our website at www.asmudgeforyourthoughts.com. From there, you can find us and like us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, if you or anyone you know would like to be on our podcast, please fill out our simple form that's located on our website. Or you can always email us at contact at um, or also just Facebook in- inbox. Message us. <laughs> <laughs> And we'd like to thank uh, Mary Kay for designing our logo and give a shout out to 8th Generation for our backdrop. They did not provide this to us, but uh, we just like what they stand for. They are inspired natives, not native inspired. All right. With that, uh, Giga Wapman. See you later. <laughs>